What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so you guys really seem to enjoy characters that are too overpowered to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So in this one, we're swinging for the fences. We're gonna have some fun. God, King, Doom. Yes, dude, I love God King Doom. Okay, God King Doom is amazing. Doctor Doom with the power of, of the Beyonders. It's insane. Okay, so preface here. So in Marvel Comics in 2012, running up until 2015, they decided they kind of wanted to reboot, but not really. They just sort of used it as like a marketing ploy. Like we might be rebooting, we might not. I kind of feel like they were supposed to, but it doesn't matter because we got Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, one of the best runs ever. So the way this happened was that like universes were basically dying and nobody really knew why. All they knew is that there were the incursions that you would be sitting on Earth one day in some universe or in the main Marvel universe and then you would see another earth and like from the time you saw it until like and, and like for for the next eight hours they would move closer to each other if one of the earths was not destroyed then the universes would crash into each other and they would both be destroyed but if you destroyed one of the other earths then the universes would just pass through each other and nothing would happen and so like this whole thing goes on like for a long time there's so many badass moments dude Black Panther reforms the Illuminati dude it's like one of the coolest things ever Black Panther's like he's like mother save me from from what I'm about to do save me from like thinkers which is Reed Richards and like righteous men uh tony stark iron man and like midnight kings black bolt of the inhumans and the devil himself which is like uh name of the submariner because during the avengers versus x-men story name of the submariner destroyed uh wakanda didn't really destroy it, but like he he like flooded wakanda and destroyed the necropolis which is like the burial ground for like all former black panthers that that's where black panther became king of the dead when he lost his powers and shuri became the new black panther so like it's, it's this really cool thing like he reforms them all and they're like uh they're like we have to figure out what's going on and reed richards is like okay so like the incursions are happening which basically means whenever and earth pops up we have eight hours to destroy it or figure out what we're going to do so they're like okay let's assemble the infinity gauntlet so they're like everybody have their infinity stones and they're like yep we all have our infinity stones but it ends, up, it ends up turning out that because charles xavier died he's not there he died in avengers versus x-men and so he bequeathed his infinity stones to or his uh, his uh mind stone to beast and so so beast gets it uh hank mccoy gets it and then he joins the illuminati and they're like okay we all have the infinity stones assemble the infinity gauntlet they're like who's going to wield it and they're like well of course you're going to wield it captain america dude it's like the most badass moment ever like like they're like okay are you ready cap and he's like yeah and he puts on the gauntlet he's like so much power and he's just like i can feel the whole universe and then he goes to push the uh universe away like to push the the incursing earth away and like the infinity stone shatter and the time stone vanishes and it's just like holy cow like okay so like they're kind of screwed now and then from that point going forward you basically run into like the illuminati hitting the panic button at every turn and trying to find a way to stop the incursions and then like oh dude here's a crazy thing after the after the infinity gauntlet is destroyed they have this meeting where uh where they all sit down and they say okay so like what are we going to do and reed's like we're going to do the only thing that we can do we're going to destroy every single earth that shows up then tries to destroy ours and captain america's like no we're not doing that we're not taking innocent life and and uh and iron man's like i'm sorry it came to the steve he's like dr strange do it and and and, and captain america's like what are you talking about and dr strange wipes his mind and like makes him forget everything and then they just send him back out again and it's like what a massive betrayal and so so then um captain like captain america realizes what's going on because of the events of original sin and like he's lost the super soldier serum by now so he's like an old man and so uh he he's director of shield and he's like after the illuminati every single resource we have send after the illuminati so then it turns into a cat and mouse game and it goes on like that for like for so long like the illuminati are constantly on the run trying to stop the incursions and captain america's leading shield and, and constantly chasing after them eventually like everything seems to come to a head and there's other stuff too right like there's other things that go on like the uh like what is it the uh the black priest and then oh dude no and then dr strange goes to the center's market and and which i like it was it was the craziest thing he goes to the center's market and goes to like to the to the bartering goes to the place to barter for power and they're like well you like your soul like you have to trade a portion of your soul for a portion of power so 10 percent of your soul for 10 percent of absolute power and dr strange is like i want it all I want 100% of my soul for 100% of the absolute power. And they're just like, no one's done that before. So what you end up finding out is like earlier in the story, which we didn't know, uh, Hank Pym Ant-Man was sent into the multiverse by Reed Richards, by the by uh, by Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four, in order to try to find a way to, to find either the source of the incursions or to stop the incursions. Like he eventually comes back and they're like, oh my God, was your mission a success? And he was like, absolutely not. We are so screwed. You have no idea what's out there. And they're like, what's out there? And he's like, the Beyonders are here. And they're like, Holy 
because the last time we saw Beyonder was in Secret Wars in 1984, and like it was insane. Like this thing, this thing crushed Galactus. Like it, it, like it just flicked Galactus back like a like a speck. This was a thing that was so powerful. Like like the original Beyonder was so powerful, the Living Tribunal couldn't stop it. And that's like the second most powerful being in the entirety of the multiverse, short only to the one above all. And so it's just like if we're fighting like an army of these things, and, and Hank's like, no, 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 that was a little baby. That was a child unit. These are the parents. Like these are these are these are the grown folk. And like and and they they are pissed. And so like he starts telling a story, right? He's just like, okay. So basically, I shrunk down to like like minuscule levels, and I grew to like huge levels, and I kind of basically slipped through like the fabric of the universe. Like I was so small, I could slip through the fabric of the universe and go from one universe to the next. He's like, then I come across a universe where the Beyonders are killing every single cosmic entity, like every celestial. They're killing eternity. It gets so bonkers. The battle is so extreme and so outrageous that eventually it starts to like distort and warp the fabric of space and time. And so the result is Hank Pym watching universes begin to blend into each other. And that's when the that's when he realizes the Beyonders that are killing the cosmic entities in this one universe, that's only a part of it. There's other Beyonders killing other cosmic entities across like the entire multiverse. And so eventually like the Living Tribunal pops up and the Living Tribunal is just like, like what is going on here? And the Beyonders are like, what's going on here is that you're dead. And like they kill him. They destroy the Living Tribunal and like a fraction of him falls in every single universe. So this eventually segues into like the huge revelation, right? And what you end up finding out is there's this guy named Molecule Man Owen Reese, who's super powerful. And his history was always kind of shady in Marvel Comics, it was always kind of shaky. But what you learn is that Molecule Man, his origin story is the same across every single universe. And the reason why is because he's basically a walking, talking bomb. That what the Beyonders wanted to do is they wanted to basically plant a Molecule Man in every single universe and then detonate them all at the same time just to see what would happen. But like Doctor Doom realized what was going on. Like Doctor Doom and Molecule Man realized what was going on. They went to another universe to try to stop it and destroy that universe's Molecule Man. But what it did is it created a cascading effect. Because that universe blew up, it pushed the universes next to it into the universes next to those. And so like it just creates this domino effect where like universes start bumping into each other. So basically like over the span of, of something like, like six days, the entire multiverse basically collapses. And like everyone's essentially, no, it's like, it's like one day. Like, like every universe is collapsing. They're all dying. They're all like almost completely and totally obliterated. And so then you have like Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange, and the Molecule Man who were like the last three men left alive, aside from those who escaped in the raft. So like Reed Richards, Black Panther, uh, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, a couple other people, I think. And then you have the villains. So like Thanos survives and then um, like a, a handful of other people. But anyway, so like Doctor Doom uses the, the combined power of the Molecule Man, Owen Reese, and Doctor Strange, channels it into himself and destroys the Beyonders, right? So like Doctor Doom annihilates the Beyonders in their entirety and then takes all their power and becomes God King Doom. And he's, he's wearing like all white and it's like the coolest thing ever. But this, this guy is like nigh unstoppable. It's insane. With a wave of his hand, he destroys Doctor Strange. He like punches his hand through Thanos' chest, grabs his spine and then disintegrates him. I mean, it's just crazy stuff like that. T'Challa, like Black Panther has the Infinity Gauntlet and just gets annihilated. He's just like, like his Doctor Strange, after he had died, he had left this kind of corpor incorporeal form, like this more or less like a message, like a voicemail for, for Black Panther in the form of like a spiritual voicemail if there was such a thing. And it was like, hey, so Battle World is composed of basically what's left of the multiverse, meaning there's different universes here. I've collected an Infinity Stone from each one of these universes or from like six, five or six of these universes. And so the Infinity Gauntlet will work on Battle World. And so, so like Black Panther's like, dude, okay, this is our one chance to win. He shows up like he, dude, he takes over the dead. He shows up to the zombie, like to the place where all the Marvel zombies are. And he's like, I'm king of the dead. And like commands the zombies to fight on his behalf, leads them in like this massive war against Dr. Doom. You have like a planet full of incredible Hulks, all of whom are led by Maestro Hulk fighting against, uh, fighting against Dr. Doom. You got the villain Apocalypse who's like wrecking the entire Thor core by himself. Like the entire army of, like an army of Thors, Groot Thor and Storm Thor and like Ultimate Universe Thor and main Marvel Universe Thor. Like he's just like wrecking them all by himself. And so like, like all this stuff is popping off. And Black Panther runs up on Dr. Doom with the Infinity Gauntlet and he's like, we have this. And, Do and Dr. Doom's like, no, you don't. And like, he's like, you're done. And, and, and like, that's it. Like his power just de like destroys the power of the Infinity Gauntlet. And it's just, it's just, I mean, it's, it's insane how much power he has. And at that point, when you're talking about like, and, and this is why he could never fit in the MCU. You're talking about Dr. Doom wielding the power, like, like having full totality of the power of beings who are powerful enough to destroy the living tribunal, to destroy the being designed to like safeguard the multiverse, to make sure that like there's no magical imbalance. The one above all created the living tribunal for that purpose. Nothing's supposed to be more powerful than the living tribunal. The Beyonders annihilated him with like three blasts, like three energy blasts and annihilated him in his entirety. But nonetheless, like you can never have that version of Dr. Doom in the MCU because he's just so damn powerful. Nobody would stand a chance. There's there's no conceivable way you could even reduce his power to make it believable because you'd have to go into who the Beyonders are and what they're about and what they're capable of and why they're so dangerous and why it matters he stole their power. Otherwise, he might as well just steal the power of Dr. Strange. So like, like you have to you have to go into that whole 
whole thing and explain like why they're so capable and why they're so dangerous and why like everybody's screwed because that was basically it man dr doom got the infinity gauntlet or got the power of the honors and it's like dude we're so screwed man this guy's gonna kill us all and there's there's nothing we can do it ends up taking reed richards to like face off against dr doom he ends up making dr doom admit that like doom believes reed richards is better and then like like in the middle of it like molecule man asked the question like do you believe reed richards could have done could have done all this better than you could have and dr doom says yes like he kind of grudgingly says yes and so like the molecule man takes the power of the beyonders away from from dr doom gives it to reed richards and like reed richards fixes everything because you know but he's a good guy that's what good guys do so like it's, it's it's one of the coolest things ever but like dude god king doom is just is so broken like he's he's overpowered broken it's amazing but I would, i'd love to see him in the mcu but there's no way to do that like there's there's no way to bring him in and make him that powerful having said that we could get the version of dr doom from secret wars 1984 the first secret wars when he stole the power of galactus but with that being said guys we're gonna bring this video to an end if you are new here to comics explain make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the rob core if you guys enjoy this video make sure you drop a like and yeah i will catch you all later peace